Hello one and all, thank you for joining us for this webinar. We really appreciate your time. I hope it's going to be valuable for you. What you see on the wall behind me is actually kind of sim well, very much symbolic of some of the content of this actual show. We've put together a solution which we hope is going to be incredibly valuable to you if you are a student and also very enriching for you if you are a teacher. This model that we have here is, can really be described as, as a thinking, a learning, and definitely also as a series of exam skills. In fact, if we take any concept that we could possibly imagine, all of these skills are what we could do in our minds with that concept. So, on that basis, it's razor-sharp preparation for you to do beautifully written answers. A couple of things we'd like to do organisationally with you before we start this show. First of all, be aware that we anticipate the show being in the region of 45 minutes. It definitely won't go longer than an hour, so if you have uh, pickups to a range and so on, that would be uh, where I would probably aim for those to be done. Secondly, if you've got pop-up blocked in your browser, we would really like you to unblock those pop-ups because we're going to get to a couple of redirects to certain pages for you that might be useful. And thirdly, we'd also like you uh, to be aware that we're going to run a small competition and prize giveaway within this session. So do be paying attention to the content of the words I say, not least about these 13 exam skills and one key in the middle making up these 14 posters. There are going to be some questions on these and you are going to be able to pick up some prizes towards the end of the show. So stay tuned in for that. Hopefully it'll be really, really worthwhile to you. Now, all that being said, let's make a move immediately now onto the canvas and let's start demonstrating to you the model which we have behind me, which we refer to as the roadmap, the Ever Learner Roadmap. Let's go. So here we go. Let's get straight into understanding and analysing what we're going to be doing in this session. First of all, I'd like to address some kind of categoric points. Who is this for? We are saying that what we're about to talk about here, what we're about to talk about here is for any student. And we've said here sitting a PE exam uh, this summer, but it could be any summer. And it actually relates to almost every subject what we're going to address here. So unless you're doing a modern foreign languages exam or a mathematics exam, we believe that the skills we are going to present here are absolutely critical to your success. So if you are in RS, if you are in geography, if you are in science, if you are in computing, if you are in DT, and so on and so on and so on, this is for those exams too. And I'm actually going to show you some examples of those as we go through just ever so quickly so we can kind of demonstrate that. Which exam board? Well, all of them, okay? So we're talking about this relating to all exam boards. You can see down here, we've got um, all level two and level three qualifications, including GCSE, BTEC first, I meant to put BTEC level three, which again, I'll show you in a second, AS, A2, and GCE exams. Now, there may well be something I've missed there, but I come back to that point of all. We believe this model is for all, with the exception of that maths and that modern foreign languages. So how are we going to do this? The challenge, well, we're going to propose four steps to you. Step one is as follows. We're going to present this new model to you right now, okay, of preparing for exam questions. But I'm also going to kind of challenge you because we also think that this is about thinking skills and that the model we're going to introduce here could be actually introduced to learners much earlier than pre-exam. We're also going to think of these as learning skills. So, okay, you students who are attending to this in this session, you are thinking about this because you've got an exam coming up, but actually this is much broader than that. Secondly, we're going to propose a series of writing challenges. In fact, I'm going to get them to pop up for you any second now. If you have got your pop-ups blocked in your browser, please unblock them, but we are going to get the pop-up with the question challenges to pop up in the browser now so you can look at them, you can print them off. And effectively, what we're going to do is we're going to ask all of the students to uh, meet those writing challenges and for you to complete and submit the questions we have proposed to you. And just so you know, there's an address you can send your answers to. It's called roadmap at mypeexam.org, which I better spell correctly, mypeexam.org. And you can submit your uh, challenge answers in there. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to read them all and we're going to annotate them using the model we're going to show you in a moment. And we're going to look for exemplary answers. And basically, once we find exemplary answers, we're going to publish them with your consent, of course. And if your answer or answers get published, we are going to reward you with a £50 payment for the publish 
for publishing your answer. So look, in my opinion, I hope that's a fair deal. We're certainly looking to demonstrate the really good work that students are capable of and again using this model. So let's get on with it. The first example we are going to address is the concept of explain. Now, if we look carefully at the question that I have here, it's quite clearly an explain question. So let's just quickly go through it. Our heart rate will vary depending on whether we are physically resting, working or recovery. We agree, heart rate changes to meet the conditions in which the body finds itself in. But what we have to do is we have to explain why. Explain why it's the specific skill being asked of us in this exam question. So it's exactly what we must do. Explain why resting heart rate is lower than recovery heart rate. So why is that? And I'm gonna demonstrate this answer to you and how it's gonna work. But before we do that, we need to look at the model and get ready for this because you're gonna see it and go, what the? But let's have a look at the model we are going to use. Oh, I actually put, brought the wrong one into play there. Here we go. That's the one I was looking for. So here's our explain model. Here's our explain model. And you see here, we have got what we would loosely refer to. We would loosely refer to this as a roadmap. Okay, so we would loosely refer to this as some kind of roadmap. Some kind of roadmap. And I want you to address what's in this middle part of the roadmap straight away. This middle part of the roadmap in here. This part of the roadmap is what we're interested in first of all. We're saying that explaining is explaining why, how or what something is or happens. Okay. And of course in our context we're, in, we're looking at explaining why. Now this little character here, here and here has a name. This little character is called Mark. No surprises there. Your job in your exam answers is to pick up Mark or is to pick up Marks. Aha, we have a metaphor, we have an analogy. And it's kind of a simple thing, but we're hoping it's going to be very memorable for you. And the next thing that we propose is that you are making a journey. Now, we probably chose the kind of the least sexy vehicle possible here in the sense that we've got a minibus. But this minibus is important because you are going to perform a certain skill you're going to cross this journey and you're going to pick up Mark on the other side of this bridge, more of which I'll come to in a moment. You notice the bridge sign here. We have provided this bridge because to cross this bridge, you have to perform the skill of explaining. So if I'm going to explain why something happens, for example, I must say because. In other words, this is because bridge. I have to cross because bridge to make my answer. So without further ado, let me kind of, in fact, let's think about this. Over here, we actually have a three mark or a three marks answer. Okay, so this model actually kind of works pretty neatly for us. This is a three mark answer, right? We're interested in making this three mark answer. Now, we're also interested in making sure that the answer meets the skill. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, that's explaining James, and you've got this daft imagery. Well, also, I want you to realize that we have much more than one daft imagery. We have imagery for 14 skills, and these 14 skills are potentially at least the skills that you are going to be asked to perform in your exams, identifying, defining, suggesting, describing, summarizing, and we have pictorially, visually represented all 14 of these skills, and we're going to cover three of them now. And we've, this is just a little learning map that we've got available if people are interested in it. So let me show how it works. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the symbolism of my because bridge and my journey uh, to pick up these marks, I'm going to relate it to my exam answer. Let's see if I'm able to do that. So let's get straight into our answer. By the way, this is the only one I'm going to kind of answer live. Others we've got kind of prepared and I'll show them to you a little bit more quickly. So I'm going to go straight into my answer. We're going to say it is lower. It is lower. And look what I've done. I've made here, I've started my journey. I've started my journey but at the moment, I have not crossed because bridge. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my language from here and I'm going to put it in. And I'm just going to use orange to highlight this. It is lower because. So I've got to because bridge and I'm beginning to cross it. Now, I'm now interested in what the content of the answer is. And I've got some words here. These are just, um, these here are just allowing me to, 
to plan my answer a little bit. So imagine these are the correct answers. The content doesn't matter here. It is lower because, and I'm going to take my first kind of key term up here because, let me go back to black. It is the heart rate. I'm just going to use HR. You would write it out, of course. It is the heart rate whilst a person, whilst a person, whilst a person is, and now we put our key answer in. I'm going to put it in a green color while a person is inactive, full stop. So what have I done in my first statement of my answer? Well, I've said the heart rate, it is lower because I've crossed because bridge and I've picked up Mark straight afterwards by giving my key part of the answer because the heart rate is when we are inactive. Let us try the next statement for my next Mark. In fact, I shouldn't have put a full stop there. And so I've used and now to kind of come back to this start point. And what do I use? I use my key connective because and because and because at rest the body at rest the body and what's my next green point has the and now I'm going to put my answer in lowest demand for O2 lowest demand for O2 so the key the absolutely critical thing here is I've, I know my answer because I've learned it and I've studied it over the course. This is a, this is a GCSE question, by the way. This is an Edexcel GCSE question from 2013. But I've known my knowledge because I've learned my knowledge through the through the course. And now I'm performing the skill of doing what? Of explaining. I've got three marks, so I must make a third point. I'm now going to use a different connective. Therefore, I think I ch changed my orange there, but you get the idea. Therefore, and please notice what comes out after therefore there is a comma therefore comma every single time therefore comma and look it's even telling me capital letter must have a comma it's helping me to increase the quality of my answer therefore resting resting heart rate therefore resting heart rate does not need to be as high and there's that needs to be lower does not need to be as high does not need to be as high and I've done my job I've made three correct points I've made three explan explanatory sentences clearly explaining why and all I'm going to do to finish off with I'm going to make a fourth one just because I want to sort of edge my backs and make sure I get all three marks just in case one of my first three points isn't right in this case it is so I've got a fourth piece of knowledge so why wouldn't I include it in my answer so we finish off with and we're going to cross our because bridge again. Recovery, recovery, heart rate, HR is higher, is higher. Crossing because bridge, because, back to my correct orange color, because, well, because of what? More oxygen is required. More oxygen is required. And of course, it's required when? During recovery. During, and there's my answer, during recovery. So what have I done here? I have made three journeys. One, cross because bridge. Two, cross because bridge. My third one was crossing therefore bridge. And I happen to have crossed because bridge a fourth time just to make sure that I get my max, my maximum number of marks possible. So what I'd like you to sort of view here is can you now see how this model deliberately and specifically relates this answer? Yes, of course. I need to know my content. I need to know the answer. But once I've got the answer, what is the skill of explaining? And I think we've got a good model there. Let's look at another example. This is a BTEC Sport Level 3 question. BTEC Sport, and don't worry, you won't have to see me write this out this time. This is BTEC Sport Level 3, uh, Unit 1. It's actually a sample uh, question currently. Let me just um, also make the image available, make the roadmap available for you. Okay, there we go. So we've got the roadmap. Let's just make sure we do this. So how are we going to do this? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to bring my content in. What is the actual answer of my question here? So we're saying explain the role, explain the role of the AV node 
in the nervous control of the heart when exercising. And I know that this here, this material here is my actual answer. But really what I wanna to get to is what is my sentence structure gonna be now that I understand that? Well, we know we're gonna cross because bridge. We're gonna cross by bridge. We're gonna cross through bridge because these are my key connectives. So let's have a little look at that. So let's look at the first sentence. Let's put it in. Heart rate increases because, let's cross because bridge, the AV node receives increased stimulation from the SA node. So the green happens to be my answer, but look at the sentence structure. Heart rate increases because, because, bridge. Let's look at the next sentence that we get as a mark. The AV node ensures complete contraction of the atria, cross but by bridge, of course. So we've got to cross by bridge. We must cross by bridge. There it is, by bridge. And it achieves this by slowing down the impulse. Next part of my answer. Let's get in my third mark here, of course. The AV node relays the impulse through, I'm crossing through bridge, sending it via the bundle of his fibers. And then, of course, I make my fourth mark here. This means ventricular contraction occurs. So I know my answer. And then all I have to do is to put it into this explaining structure as detailed right here, crossing that bridge to pick up Mark. Now, a couple of things before I move on to a different subject to show you this. A couple of things we think that is very important here. The symbolism and the visualization of the answer is important. That's exactly why we are promoting the model of a learning mat here. You know, if I've got a four mark question, if I've got a four mark question, it is highly likely, it is highly likely in my four mark question that I'm gonna do my journey, there's my because bridge, and then I pick up my little Mark character who's got his arm um, uh, held out. And then basically I repeat that four times, crossing because bridge four times, and I can draw that on my learning mat. And I must remember that I must use connectives like because, therefore, through, by, therefore, comma, of course, to be specific. So let's see, does this apply anywhere else? And the sort of the really positive news is that this is actually a really, really versatile answer. So let's have a look at another example of where this could actually be incorporated um, if we if we look at it in another subject. So look, this over here is an example from AS Biology, okay? And it's asking, so this is an advanced level, A-level biology series of questions. And of course, it's looking at graphical analysis. Feel free to read the whole question structure if you want. But 3A1 down here is asking me the following. Explain, there's my command term, that's the skill I must show, the change in the rate of reaction between zero seconds and five seconds. So we're interested in this process here. So how do we do it? The rate of reaction falls because, crossing because bridge, the substrate is used up. There's my knowledge. Therefore, look at the error here. Question, uh, sorry, therefore, comma, there are fewer active sites occupied and I get my two marks. I've got to know my material. I've got to know my knowledge. But assuming I do, the sentence structure works every time and shows specifically that you are explaining. 3A2. Explain what the change in the rate of reaction between five and six minutes shows about the enzyme. Sorry, I think I said seconds earlier. This, of course, here is uh, five, uh, zero to five minutes. And, of course, now we're looking at five to six minutes, so we're interested in this part of the curve. So now I have to say, using my connectives from up here, using my connectives, I have to say the reason for this, the reason for this, is that now my answer the enzyme on the enzymes are not used up so i want you to think about the 14 skills of answering an exam question um, i want you to think how useful it is to have these visual cues and this idea of performing a, a particular behavior assuming you've got the knowledge then to pick up this mark character have a think about that okay what i'm going to do is I'm going to have a very short change of the canvas and I'll be straight back to you where we're actually go on, going to go on to this skill over here. We're going to go on to the skill of comparing from over here. We're going to have a look at that in a lot more detail. Stay, stick with me five seconds while I change the canvas.
So in this next little section, we're actually going to have a look at the skill of comparison, or we're going to have a look at the skill of comparing something within a question. So let's kind of assume the same information we've already talked about. And let's go down to our example two and look at the concept of a compare question. And I don't think this is going to come as any surprise to you, but the question starts, compare, compare the pre-industrial games of mob football and real tennis. So clearly, the skill that we need to perform in this question is to compare something. Now, I'm going to mention that a couple of the six marks are also available for giving or stating or naming something, but we'll come to that in a few months' time. But the majority of my skill is comparing. So what is that comparison going to look like? And let me bring this in straight away. We have a series of skills here in comparison, whereby if I take mob football, and let's say, for exa example, I go on my journey and I make a series of statements about mob football over here and likewise I go on a journey and I make a series of statements about real tennis from the historical studies in sport over here but I make no comparative statement between them then I don't get up get to pick up this mark character as we saw already this question is worth four marks sorry are going to be available for the comparison skill because we can see here give two possible reasons for limited participation in real tennis today so i have to make a minimum of four comparative statements so let me just show you what that would look like i mean we've got our comparison uh, just down here as well if you want to have a little look at it we've got our comparison just here but what i'm going to do here is i'm going to draw my little kind of almost like a cup a wine glass shape like this and over here, of course, I'm going to talk about mob football. And over here, I'm going to talk about real tennis. And I have to make one, two, three, four comparative statements if I'm going to pick up my little, let me, let me do them in an orange color, if I'm going to pick up my little mark character. For each comparative relevant statement, mark is going to be available for each one of those. So how do we go about making this comparative statement. So I'm going to make four of these. The skill is here for me. I understand the skill and I now need to perform it. So look, in terms of the content of our answer, I've kind of scribbled over a little bit, but here we have the content of our answer. We've got simple rules, complex rules, annually played, frequently played, wagering and wagering, lower class and gentry. But how are we going to structure that into an actual exam answer? So let's have a go at it. Here's my statement number one. Here we go. Mob football had simple rules. There's my content from there. I then take my connective. In contrast, comma, real tennis had complex rules. Now, I've clearly made a comparative statement. I've clearly brought my answer into the middle and linked the two co concepts together by making a comparison. My second example Mob football was played annually. Now look at this one. I'm going to use whereas as my connective. It shows me clearly here, comma, space, whereas does not have a capital letter. It has to be in the middle of a sentence. Look what I've got here. Mob football was played annually, comma, space, whereas real tennis was played frequently. I've got my answer and I put it into the structure using my connectives. It works perfectly, beautifully and ideally. Let's look at the third example. Next statement, mob football involved wagering. Okay, just a, a statement of a characteristic of, of that sport. Now, this happens to be the same in real tennis. So we use similarly, I always find it hard to say that word, similarly, similarly, comma, similarly, comma, real tennis also involved wagering. I've made a comparative and this time I found a similarity. So that's absolutely fine if I'm making a comparative statement. And finally down here, at least for the four marks for the comparison skill, I make my last statement. Mob football was played exclusively by the lower classes. Full stop. Look at this one. In antithesis, we are encouraging you to use quality language like this. Not only that, but in antithesis, comma. And I'm kind of freestyling here because we've got the antithesis is over here. But in, in this case, I'm saying in antithesis. If you don't know what antithesis is, don't worry. It just means it's like a posh word of saying like in opposition, the opposite. Okay, and we should be encouraging you to broaden your vocabulary, in this case, your vocabulary of connectives. And you can use them because we provide them for you on here. In antithesis, comma, real tennis was played by the gentry. I make, if I go back to my illustration, I make my one, I make my one, two, three, 
four comparisons and as a result of those four comparisons I make my four marks which is available for me up here. Now the only other thing I would kind of say at this stage is there's a second skill asked of me here and I'm not going to make a big deal of it but basically we must give we must name that other bit so I'm just going to include it so you don't think I've missed it so two possible reasons for limited participation in tennis today or uh, real tennis sorry we're saying it's expensive and exclusive today so people don't play it and the middle class have a new tradition of lawn tennis so we would include that in our answer but the key thing we want to get out of this is this comparative skill is this comparative symbolism so I hope you can see there that the roadmap is extremely useful for us okay fine James it kind of works for a mob football real tennis question great does it work for anything else does this make a difference to me anywhere else well the answer to that is yes that last question was an a to p e question from the historical studies of sport um, OCR this question we have on here just bring my notes closer this question we have here this is actually an advanced computing theory exam advanced computing theory exam so this is an a level computing exam and okay we might not be studying that or maybe you are but the point is the con the, the construct of the, the the format of the answer is perfect so i'm asked to just choose a different color i'm asked to compare again okay in this case i'm comp comparing a cisc to a risk architecture don't worry if you aren't aware or familiar with this 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 construct but here just the structure cisc instruction cisc instructions have a variable format in contrast comma risk instructions perform a single task cisc has a complicated co complicated processor design comma space whereas look where we're getting that from comma space whereas risk has a simple processor design cisc has many instructions available however comma look where we're getting it from However, comma, however, comma, risk has limited instructions available. The integrated circuit of CISC is expensive, comma, space, whereas a risk circuit is, circuit is cheaper. Okay, this question, see just down there, is worth four marks. We actually made five statements uh, within that. Um, but nevertheless, we, we've done our job and we've performed that skill. And the key thing I want to really kind of overemphasize here is that this model has done the job for us. Assuming we know our content, the model from the roadmap literally does it for us every single time, including the quality of our connectives. Think about how easy it is to visualize and memorize that model that's on the screen now. Look at this structure. Can you remember that that is what a comparison looks like? If you can, then the value of this system, the value of this model is extremely high to you. It's extremely high to you because this skill can be used over and over again. Not only is it an exam skill, it's a thinking skill. It's a learning skill. When you learn something new today, compare it explain it what we're going to go into in a moment evaluate it it develops certain pathways in your mind it encourages certain types of thought it's a really rich experience so anyway i'm going to just change canvas over again and we're going to have a look at the evaluation skill and this is where we kind of really get on to extended writing because we're going to be looking at evaluation skills tune uh, stick with me i should say and we'll be straight back with that evaluation So the third and final skill that we're going to address within this particular session of the 14 we uh, need to really be able to address is that of evaluation. And I can't emphasize enough that I think what we're going to see here is going to really demystify the concept of extended writing in exams. This notion of the critical evaluation, this notion of the extended writing, this notion of the level question, this notion of the 6, the 8, the 10, the 12, the 14, the 20 mark question. Because what we're going to see here is that just given common sense structures and concepts, we can make it extremely simple, assuming we know our material. So let's move down to an example three. And before I flash in the, the, the roadmap that we'd encourage you to consider and to memorize, I want to remind you that in a few moments time, we're actually gonna be having our prize giveaway where we give a series of our resources away to you and you can be the one to claim those um, in a few moments time. We're gonna ask you a question about something we talk about within the session here, as I've mentioned already. So make sure you are switched on and you're listening to that. So look, over here, I have a question which is clearly asking me to critically evaluate something. 
I've got the possible impact of hosting the Olympic Games in the UK in 2012. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's in the past, James. Well, yes, this question was an OCR ASP advanced level PE exam in 2011. Critically evaluate the possible impact of the Olympic Games in 2012. And I thought this was an inter interesting question because we can write about it now. And not only can we write about it as if we were in 2011, but we can actually kind of have a bit of an idea of whether it was right or not. This is kind of an intriguing one. And it says here, your answer should include benefits and drawbacks to both sport and society. So benefits and drawbacks to both sport and society. So let's have a look at our roadmap structure that we are interested in using and it's absolutely one of my favourite ones. I think it's magnificent, I think it's beautiful and I think it's going to help you a great great deal. So how does this work? Well again we're going to go on our journey and so for example when we go over onto this side of the journey you see here I've got Mark here and mark here. And what does this skill say we have to do? We have to judge from both sides of the argument. So over here, for this mark, I'm going to say something positive. And for this mark, I'm going to say something negative. So in this case, uh, as you've got here, a benefit of the Olympic Games and a drawback. So my benefits are going to be positives and my drawbacks are going to be uh, negative. So it's almost like we're looping around this road. Okay, we're also going to make another series of uh, benefits and drawbacks. We're also going to make another series of benefits and drawbacks. Now, this general structure I've got on the image here is a very simple one. It's as if it was a six marker. Well, this question here is actually a 10 mark question. Okay, so it's worth 10 marks. But more than that, I want to make something which is specific to this particular structure. So look, I mean, I could take you all the way down and we could have a look here and we could do this on our actual learning map down here, but I actually want our drawing to be near our answer. What I think we should be doing within this answer is I think we should be making our road and I think we should effectively be making two circles. Let me just, I'm not drawing this very well two circles like this. So you see over here, what I've done is I've effectively got two circles rather than three. Now over on this one, this is going to be all about the benefits and drawbacks to sports. And over on this one, it's going to be about the benefits and drawbacks to society. And of course, what I'm going to do here is on my positive side, on this side, I'm going to make lots of statements for lots, hopefully, of marks. Okay, so I'm going to make lots of positives to society. But over on this side, which is the negative side, I'm also going to make lots of statements which are negative to do with the Olympic Games and to do with society. So I must address both sides of this. Equally, over on this side, we're going to do positives in relation to the sport. Okay, so lots of marks that we're going to pick up in here in our little minibus travel over here. So I'm going to make lots of positive statements. And over on this side, I'm going to do lots of negative statements because, of course, I've got to evaluate both parts of this answer. So I'm going to make positives and negatives. So what is that going to look like and how can I use brilliant connectives to do that? Well, you'll be pleased to know this is a long question, so I've actually prepared uh, the answer in advance for you. Okay, so let's put let's put some of our answer in here. Let's put some of our answer in. So what's our first statement going to be? Let's have a look. The 2012 games benefit sport as they as they might, and here's my first answer in green, raise the profile of minority sports. So therefore, I'm making a positive statement. If I just go down slight down here, so this is a positive for sport. So it's almost like I'm crossing this guy out. I've made a positive for the sport, right? Um, uh, and a minority, minority sport such as handball, which is an advantage. In other words, I'm taking my language from the key connectives taking my language from the key connectors and including it. Another piece of my connectives that we've got is on the other hand. Okay, so now I include that, full stop. On the other hand, comma, which is in my uh, on my uh, roadmap here. On the other hand, sports not in the game, such as netball, may miss out due to a lack of publicity. So what have I done there? I've crossed out this guy for uh, the impact on sport for a positive. And now I've picked up Mark on this side for saying a negative for sport. In other words, I've quite literally just followed my map. I've followed my roadmap. Next sentence. Next sentence. Let's put it in. A couple of sentences actually. Another disadvantage. Look, I'm taking my I'm taking my key language from my connectives. Another disadvantage is that the investment may be directed to excellence rather than grassroots, such as school or community provision. So look. I've come down here and we're saying, uh, we're saying, we're saying a disadvantage, that's a negative, 
There's my mark picked up. Is that it might go towards excellence, not grassroots. But then we go, an advantage to sport is the development of world-class facilities such as the sailing centre in Weymouth. So in other words, I've now made world-class facilities and I've picked up my positive mark over there. And we carry on. Sorry for jolting you around a bit here. In contrast, comma, critics argue that these facilities might end be might end up being used or sorry might end up being wasted or simply benefit football teams so again that's a negative i cross off this guy over here i've made a negative comment about the olympic games potentially at least and actually that one turned out to be true right the olympic stadium as of today is being used by a premier league football team men's football team so we've got the benefit football teams in london only kind of point that turned out to be right but again we're using our connectives we're putting our content into the answer but we're following our structure next little part of our answer let's just do a couple more of these look at this one a further benefit now a benefit by the way of course could be a benefit of course could be our, our connective in here but of course i've taken the word benefit because it's in the question okay where, where did I get to? A further benefit, there's our connective, is the Team GB success. So it's our answer. So we're going to get more success for TB, Team GB. So that's good for the sport. Boom. I cross off that guy there and I get more points for that. Um, host countries tend to win more medals. So I'll just explain that point. On the other hand, comma, look, on the other hand, or we could have said in contrast, numerous ways we could have said that, the sport will suffer if the pressure leads to drug scandals. So we've actually put another little, this time, green mark in there, and we've crossed him off. So effectively, we have covered this part of our answer, okay? This part of our answer. Let me just go a little bit further for you. But of course, we've got to do a little bit more than that. So now we're going to start taking it to this other side, and we're going to start talking about society. I'm just going to give you one example of these, okay? And we would go on with our answer, sure. We've put here, the games also impact on society. I'm not going to do a big introduction. There's no need. London should experience a boom in upgraded amenities and regeneration and improved transport, transport networks. Boom, boom. I get my two positive comments in there. Those are both advantages. However, comma, I must look at the other side. However, and again, I'm freestyling here. I've decided on my own connective here. I've added however. And of course, like we've used it before, however, comma, however, comma, a disadvantage, there's our connective, a disadvantage could be overspending and long-term debt. In other words, we've gone to overspending, long-term debt over on the negative side for society. And of course, we would continue the answer on like that until we exhausted our knowledge. So we wouldn't leave any of our knowledge off the page. The only other point I want to make about this about evaluation, about evaluating, is that we clearly say up here, look, we are saying we must reach a conclusion. Okay, so what do we want a conclusion to be? Well, I'll show you the one I've included here. It's a very simple thing. It's a very simple... <laughs> Sorry, I uh, hid the wrong one there, so I want to see this one. So I've put, in conclusion, comma, in conclusion, comma, there's my connective, in conclusion, comma, I would argue that the games will be positive for London and potentially the whole of the UK, all of the UK, sorry, but, but that all potential threats need to be identified and mitigated by good planning and policies. So in other words, what have I said there? I've said, look, judging both sides of the argument, remember what evaluation is, judge from both sides, judging from both sides of the argument, I'm basically saying I think the, the impact of the Olympics is a good thing, but it has to be achieved with good planning and policies, indeed included what I've described in my answer. And I finish off with that rounded, balanced conclusion. You don't want to say something kind of crazy in your conclusion. You want a balanced conclusion in there. So look, I hope you guys can realise how memorable that symbolism is. I mean, are you ever going to forget what evaluation means now you've looked at that? Yes, I accept. You have to kind of memorise the, the, the wording and the grammar of the connectives, right? And I've scribbled all over it, which is probably not helpful. But, you know, we've been very specific here. When you write in conclusion, you are going to write in conclusion comma. When you write whereas, it's going to be comma space whereas in the middle of a sentence because you're going to make a subordinate clause. When you write similarly, it's got a capital letter because it has to be at the start of a sentence. And then you put your comma. In other words, we're really increasing the quality of your answer. 
Then, of course, I'm going to whisper this one quietly. We just need all those PE exam markers to be good on their grammar, folks. And I'm sure that will be the case and we can trust them. Because the exam board, of course, train them with these things. They're ruthlessly efficient. Now then, uh, a couple of other things. Let me finish off uh, just quickly by showing you that this doesn't happen just... I've uh, covered over my map there. But this doesn't just... <laughs> in fact, no, I haven't. Let Just bear with me a second, folks. This doesn't have to also be just to do, um, this doesn't have to be just to do with uh, the concept of uh, the, the concept of PE. It can be to do with various other subjects. And in the example I've got here, we're looking at an A-level DT exam in 2015, an A-level DT exam. And I'm sorry my little squirrely squiggle is there, but I, I can't find which layer I've got it on to get rid of it for you. Uh, but anyway, you can, uh, let me have a little try. Let me have a little try. I wonder if it's on. I wonder if it's on this one. No, it's not on that one. It's not on that one either. <laughs> uh, never mind. Anyway, you get the idea. So what have we got here? We've got evaluate the use of liquid crystal display technology on mobile phone screens. An advantage of LCD is the low energy requirement. However, the screens can be broken easily. Full stop. A further positive. There's my connective is the lightweight units. There's my answer. On the other hand, the screen is expensive to replace. On the other hand, my connective. A strength of LCD is a bright display, but the screens can suffer image retention. In conclusion, because I must include that, comma, LCD is here to stay, but the technology needs to become more robust and durable. I make a balanced conclusion. So this is a DT exam, A level from 2015. So again, I ask you folks, are you ever going to be able to forget, and don't try to, but are you ever going to be able to forget what an evaluation means? Are you going to be able to picture that illustration and remember it so that when you sit in those challenging exams, if you're posed a critical evaluation or an evaluate question, you're going to be able to address that concept easily. Okay, look, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from um, the canvas-based stuff here, and I'm just going to show you a couple of things that we've got available to you. I mean, obviously, you can see some of the resources where you've been building here, and I'd just like to demonstrate that to you now before we actually start giving some of them away. I want to, at this stage, just say thanks so much for listening and paying attention. Thank you, folks. So now we've got a good understanding of what this model is all about. Let me show you a couple of the things that you can kind of get involved with if you want to take this further. By far, in my opinion, the most important thing you can do at this stage is consider what we are offering in terms of our live revision this summer. Uh, it starts in April and culminates in June, depending on which exam you're doing. And you see here, if you go to our homepage, mypexam.org, and you click live revision uh, 2017, you can't really miss this. It's 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 there waiting for you. And you know what, what we're going to do in these shows is a bit like we did within this session we're going to demonstrate to you for your specific example for your specific course a whole range of answer uh, examples and and command word skills and exam skills which you can then directly apply in your exam so for example if you're doing a 2 pe revision with aqa or ocr or you're doing excel gcc or btech level three sport um we'll be able to demonstrate to you a whole a vast array of different skills within those 90 minute sessions that relate to exactly the skills we've talked about within this session. So we'll go, we'll, we'll do more than explain, compare and evaluate. We'll, we'll be identifying, we'll be suggesting, we'll be summarising, we'll be describing. We'll be doing all of those skills, discussion, we're discussing, which is a really, really important one. And I can't emphasise enough that that's going to be a really important aspect for you. Uh, the second point, I'm just going to switch uh, browsers here. Uh, the second one is that we actually have an online course uh, that's going to take you through this entire experience here. So, of course, you see here, as, as, as I present, this is actually... Uh, uh, it's actually privately listed right now, but it'll be uh, public and available any moment, probably within a few seconds, actually. Um, but what we'd like you to be aware of here is that we're providing you an experience here where you, for example, if I just drag you down, you, for example, can go into the explain content. You can take a tutorial all about the process of explaining, about 14 minutes here. It's going to take you through all about explaining. And once you've so I've really grasped and understood that. We're also going to test your knowledge via, via a series of uh, quiz questions. And it's a really, really nice model. Okay, so you're going to have a simple thing. In, in an explanation question, which skill sign would you use? Well, we know it's because bridge, so we're going to tick this one. And we're going to check that off. 
and we get a little bit of feedback about the bridge being the explaining skill and so on. And we move on in this one. Is this statement true or false? Explaining questions require you to analyze a concept and provide the main points. Well, do we think that's true or it's false? Well, I'm going to say false and it's going to give me feedback on whether I'm right or wrong. It was false because that was, of course, the analyze skill where we break things into parts and explain questions asks how or why something happens and we can go on and we do different kind of uh, matchups and various questions which are going to really hone your skills so in terms of our online resources we would really encourage you to consider if i just go back uh, slightly we really encourage you to consider this online course as a skills course and by the way it is a certificate of course we provide you a beautiful certificate as well on completion of this course um, and it, it, it's it's a it's a really nice experience because you can you can upskill and develop your knowledge in that self-paced environment but of course we also have the physical resources which I'm going to show you right now and I really do hope you'll consider uh, getting involved with Now, actually, let, let's address some of the things that you can get hold of physically to improve and develop on this skill. Before we do that, though, I want to bring you to the competition for the first correct answer from an individual student and for, for the first correct answer from a school. We are going to provide a pack to you, send it out to you that you can use, and I'll show you what will be included in those packs in a few moments' time. But the question, first of all, I would like you to post into the chat space now how many exam skills we are providing in this solution that is pictured behind me. How many exam skills are actually included in here? We've stated it a couple of times in the session already. How many were there in total? I'll let you get your answers into that chat space and our moderators will pick up your answers as we go along. Now, of course, I'd also like you to be aware of what's available to you. First of all, especially if you're a teacher and you're looking to incorporate this in your classroom, these posters I have behind me are a great display that you could potentially have in your classroom very, very, very soon. So have a think about whether you'd like to have these in there supporting your students with what they're doing. Um, we've also got posters like this one. This is, albeit only an A3 ver version, we have this as an A2 wall poster, really, really beautiful. Imagine uh, having this one. I don't know, uh, don't know how attractive it would be for uh, individual students to want to do this, but it could be in your bedroom or your revision and studying space. It could be on the back of your school toilet doors if that's where you want these stimuli to be actually used. You can have these in corridors on notice boards all over the place if that's what you want. Second resource that I'd like to quickly show to you, this is a learning mat. And on the learning mat here we have all of our skills, but importantly here we have space for a whiteboard pen to sketch out your own bespoke individual design of an answer structure for any of these skills. You wipe it clear and you're good to go for the next one. And we also have, again, is a resource we call the pocket guide for obvious reasons. This pocket guide is a beautifully compact resource which allows you to carry and take all of the exam skills with you that you could possibly need. All, I won't see how many because it's the competition, all that number of them that are available here and it's great it can go into your pencil case it can go into uh, your wallet and as we said before it can go into your pocket just just a caveat on that please don't take it into the exam hall with you we are actually a little bit concerned that somebody might do that so please don't forget you've got that with you you wouldn't be permitted this in the exam with you so please 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 don't do that and finally as a physical resource at least and you've already seen some of our online resources finally we also have these uh, the ever learner playing cards for these skills so imagine uh, teachers in the classroom that you are uh, developing a concept, you're developing a concept on redistribution of blood or whatever it happens to be and you're covering that thing and you turn over this card and it's probably a bad example because it was calculate, I'll choose a different one, you've got to justify and you develop the skill of justification for why, for example, justify why redistribution of cardiac output in the recovery goes back towards the rest of the body, for example. And these sorts of cards could make it really interesting in the classroom, developing games which develop the specific skills of the exam. And we really endorse these cards. And these ones are available on pre-order. You might want to go and get yourselves involved with those. It's a very simple resource. Could be used in a multitude of different ways. So come and have a look and get involved with those. So the last thing really for me to do is I'm going to quickly show you the, um, the, the, the spaces where you can get hold of these resources and then we'll move on from there. Thanks. So as our very last task within this within this show, 
I just want to demonstrate to you a page. This is actually on our staging site, our practice site, but uh, it's available via mypexam.org forward slash the dash roadmap. It's exactly the same as this with the roadmap on the end, apart from it's on our live site. Um, and it might actually look a little bit different to this when you actually get there because we're actually adding some photographs to the live site as I actually do this show. Um, but nevertheless, look, the key things are that what we've tried to do here is we've tried to get to a situation where we can really guide you around the use of these services. First of all, let me repeat that the probably the critical thing is that you go and have a look at our live revision page. It actually links from here is on the main page of the website as you've already seen. But beyond that, we've also got this page here where you can come and actually get hold of some of the things um, that we've got available to you. So, for example, if you're an individual student, we have uh, facilities that here whereby you can get hold of your posters, your pocket guides. You can get access to the online course or a combination uh, for the class packs exactly the same we have uh, packs of resources for the classroom we have online resources for the whole of your classroom including your teachers and your students and a combination of those but um, we've also got whole school packages we really think that this service might be relevant even almost as a whole school literacy strategy uh, or, or at least part of that we've also got pre-orders of our learning mats and our playing cards which are down here and finally we hope that some of you may well consider uh, getting involved with us and allowing us to do some training with you uh, either online or in person and us coming to you and showing you your whole teaching teams your entire teaching staff perhaps your faculty or department staff how good practice with this model would actually work not just what the posters look like but how do we embed the skill of evaluation the skill of comparison the skill the skill of explanation within every single class, within every single lesson, where, of course, whenever, of course, it's relevant. So not just that this is kind of a knowledge thing, but we need to develop the skills from it. And anyway, look, we go into some detail here about what's an offer and you can have a good look. Um, just a couple of things. When you select, for example, a student pack and you decide you're going to uh, get involved with that, you can you get here a little order summary you can order your selected and basically you just fill your details in here and we do the rest for you okay so it's nice and simple um, you can get involved from from this little ordering page and it's really simple you just order from there and your uh, your your parcel if you're ordering the physical resources will be in the post for you and will be arriving very very imminently okay so um, get involved and and come and have a look what we what we do mypeexam.org forward slash the dash roadmap and hopefully you're going to find it really, really useful. Look, I'm going to sign off here. We're going to redirect you actually to this page on the live site so you can't miss it. We may already have done that within the show, and if we haven't, we'll do it for you now. Um, and, you know, I just want to just want to say massive thanks for paying attention within this show. I hope it's been useful for you. Students, please get involved in our competition, our writing challenge. It's a great thing to get involved with. It will really harness and hone these skills that you've got here. Do remember when you submit your responses to us, we'd really like to see the illustrations you make as well as the answers that you write. So do include include those please and we're really looking forward to, to seeing what you have to say about these things thank you so much I wish you all the very very best not only today but uh, for your upcoming exams and again uh, for longer term in the future um, hope it goes well for you 